Good morning, Algebra 1 students. Welcome to the Algebra 1 Islands High School video on making your fun with functions Google site. So we are now on section interpretation. And you have an option in this section. You must do one on linear, and then you have a choice for your second one is either uh, exponential or quadratic. So uh, we're ready to start. Here we go. Mr. Howe, would you like to say a few words first before I begin? Uh, yeah, so I'm obviously just welcome everybody and thank you to those of you who are actually working on this. You know, we realize right. that not everyone even has to do this, but we certainly appreciate the continued effort from those of you that are. Um, some of you I know are also really excited about the possibility of, you know, going from a C to a B or a B to an A, and, you know, you should be taking advantage of it for those reasons. All right, so we're back with you guys. This is interpretation uh, section of Fun with Functions Google site for Algebra 1 students at Islands High School. Uh, Mr. Hal and I will be helping you understand how to do and give you some short instructions on how to do uh, this section of the Google site for this week. So the first thing you need to do is I'm going to share my screen with you. And here. Oh. Okay, so um, yeah, I have. There we go. It, look, it looks good. Okay, so I just want to show you, well, just briefly, you know, here's my website. We've already got videos, how to do about me, how to do the vocabulary, put the parent functions in. I haven't done everything. I just have this spot right here when you had to do functional notation, just to show you that you can do it on a piece of paper. I'm sure your handwriting is better than mine, but you can do it on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and insert it into the section. So here we are now going into the interpretation section. So the first thing we need to do is put our title in. And remember, you're going to insert a text box, right? Insert a text box. And I just did it down here, but you're going to do it next. And remember, you're going to make sure it's under heading, title or heading, so that when you put it in, what happens to it? It goes right up here into your table of contents. And some of you are just typing. This should you you should use a table of contents section up here. There's a, a button for that so that it'll go and the links work. Another thing I would like to remind everybody: as soon as you finish a section, publish it. Publish it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Please. So, so the thing that um, if you go to the rubric, so I'm gonna pop over here to the rubric. Okay, just so we see here, um, interpretation. There's two parts. The first one is a linear function because that's the one you know most about, probably feel the most comfortable because you've been working on that since eighth grade. And the same thing you have to do down here in the B section, except you have, get to pick exponential or quadratic function. And let's talk about linear and then I'll let, Mr. Howe, maybe chime in about exponential or quadratic. You would, um, so linear function, A, create a story that can be modeled with a linear function, okay? Anything linear, right? It has the rate of change that's constant, slope. So it could be any little story that you can write on. You can look in your coach book to find one. You can look anywhere if um, your resources to have a linear function. You have to provide a graph. I would highly recommend to use Desmos for that. Describe the key features. What are the key features? Intercepts. What are the key features in, in a linear graph is the y-intercept. Interval where function is increasing and decreasing. Where is it positive and negative? At end behaviors. That a lot applies to quadratics or uh, exponentials. Describe the rate of change. In linear, it's slope. Okay? So this should get you really going so that maybe a little bit more complicated ones are those functions you learned last. So once we looked at the, we looked that there's A, B, C, and D. I'm going to go back to my slide here. And I did this on a Google slide. 
and then I inserted it into another section of my website. Okay, so that's what I did. Um, so you can see I just put this in a Google slide. So um, I, I went to my drive, right? And you can select a slide, right? With the, you know, folder here, find out what slide you want, a Google slide. You do it in a Word document um, on a Google Doc, but I did mine on a slide. Okay, go back here, hold on. So this is done on a slide. So I created a story first on the Google slide. I said, John joins a gym, John had to pay, join her fee, there's a slide mount, there's a line. I wrote a little story and typed it in my Google slide, okay? And I used the format of two parts of layout so that I could type one part and insert a picture of my graph. I then immediately went to Desmos and I typed in my equation here. If you need help with that, those are the things, specific questions that Mr. Howell was talking about in our other video about what we like to see type of questions. I typed it in here, okay? And I need a graph. That's part of section B is the graph. I also like to note over here in uh, Desmos, there's graph settings. You can hit that little gear here and you can actually put in what your x-axis and y-axis is going to be. And you can also put labels in there um, under the gear, little wrench thing. And then I got my graph. So I got cost. Remember, if this is a thing about joining a gym, I'm not going to have negative numbers in my story. I'm, not gonna, I'm going from zero to, I said, to join for five years, 12 months. So I made a graph. Then how do you make a picture of that? Well, if you have a Chromebook, you can do the control shift with the little button above the six. Or if you got a regular computer, you can do the snipping tool. We can show you those type of things and you're gonna take a picture of that. And then what I did is I put it on my Google slide. Then I have my graph. Then I talked about my key features. I didn't put all the answers in here. Slope, y-intercept, I put increasing. Remember, you can also insert infinity sign in Google Slide, insert a special character. Rate a change, and I'm done. I already finished that, interpretation. Then after that, I'm going to add one uh, that's going to be uh, for a quadratic or exponential. It's that's it. It's fine in your story. Use a lot of resources. Uh, we need a little story that is either um, oh, for, in this section for linear equations. That's it, guys. Check your rubric. Mr. Howell, would you like to talk about what they could do for exponential or quadratic? Or? Yeah. Okay. Should be seeing my screen now. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to point out to everybody um, I'm going to try to do this real quick in a way that you can see it. Okay, so on the left hand side, you see the rubric. On the right hand side, you see the slide that Miss Livingston made. And I kind of get the impression that a lot of people aren't accustomed to using a rubric the way that it needs to be used, um, which is fine. but you need to recognize that rubrics are kind of a gift in that they tell you exactly what we are looking for. So you literally should go through the rubric for the week. And if it says that you're in doing interpretation in the first part to linear function, then your title should be something along the lines of linear function or linear interpretation or interpretation. Um, notice part A says create a story. And over here for part A, that's exactly what Ms. Livingston did. She created a story. Part B, provide a graph, okay? There's a graph right here. Part C, describe the key features. There she put a C to let you know it was part C. Key features, slope, y-intercept, etc. And there's no guessing either for what we mean by key features because 
we tell you intercepts, interval where the function is increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, and behaviors, et cetera. Then it says describe the rate of change, which we even tell you is the slope of your function over an interval. And so right here, for part D, rate of change is 20. Um, the rubric is your opportunity to go step by step and ask yourself, do I understand what's going on? I mean, if you read part A and you don't understand what create a story means, well, you need to figure that part out before you continue. Um, if you read part B and it says provide a graph and you haven't even put a graph on there, that's a red flag and yeah, that's a problem. Um, and then notice here for D, it says describe the rate of change, slope of your function over an interval. It says over an interval. So that applies more to your quadratic and your exponential functions than it does linear. Correct. Because linear has a constant rate of change, which should sound pretty familiar, which is why Ms. Livingston was able to just say 20, 20 over one, which is her slope, which you also could have listed there next to slope if you wanted to. Um, so you should see some repetition here. The reason why we put over an interval though is because your slope is gonna be changing with exponential and quadratic. Um, I understand that it may be a little, a little bit of a challenge to create a word problem, um, and that's okay. You know, if you can't just create one off the top of your head, um, like Ms. Livingston said, use your resources, go back in your notes. If you've got a coach book, go back in that. Um, but you've also got the internet. I mean, you can look up example problems. You can even look up example problems like worked out and you'll find what you're looking for. It may take a little while, but you can find what you're looking for. Um, and that's certainly going to apply when you get to exponential or quadratic. We don't care which one you do. Um, you know, it's up to you. You can pick exponential or quadratic. Um, in general, exponential is probably a little easier. Um, but in any case, you're process is going to be exactly the same. You've got to create a problem. Um, I can tell you with quadratics, if you were to pick that, uh, big hint, you're probably going to wind up with something called projectile motion, which is a really fancy way of, in physics of saying we've got something that's being launched or something that's being shot or something that's being tossed. It goes up, it comes down. <laughs> It's going to be a parabola, a U shape, that's quadratic. So most of your examples related to quadratics it's going to be something related to like, you know, maybe a ball getting thrown in the air, um, maybe a rocket being shot and coming down, something like that. Um, exponentials, we've talked a lot about, especially with what's going on in the world right now, because you've got exponential growth and exponential decay. Um, the your 401ks, your installs, yeah. virus. Yeah, so viruses, you know, how interest accumulates, all sorts of things like you can look that up and right now you could actually find some real examples of exponentials with COVID-19 if you wanted to. Um, you could also go back to previous things like the Spanish flu in 1918 and you could get an example of that. Um, or you know if you wanted to go in the financial realm you could find graphs of things like interest accumulating and you're gonna have to create an example. Yeah that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge but again you can look up examples that are already written. You shouldn't plagiarize, don't do it word for word, but you can use that to kind of inspire your own example. And as long as you get your equation right, based off your example, you don't have to worry about graphing it incorrectly because Desmos is gonna do that for you. Um, if by chance though, you can do it by hand. I mean, if yeah. you can't, if you don't have Desmos, don't hold, that hold you back, but Desmos makes it very easy. Right, and if for some reason you can't use Desmos though, that would be a great time to reach out to us and say, hey, how do I go about graphing something like this by hand? That'd be a good question. And that's something that we'd both be happy to answer. Um, exactly. And, and that would warrant, a, you know, probably a detailed response because it is going to be a little harder to do a quadratic in particular by hand, but, you know, not impossible. And honestly, it won't even take that long, um, but you may need a refresher on how to do it. Um, or you could put it on your graphing calculator and take a picture of your graphing calculator screen. Yes. There's so many options. Don't be afraid. Um, and I guess in closing, you know, I'm not going to go through and recreate everything we did with the linear function. That's why you've got the linear example. One thing I did want to point out, though, was, you know, on your websites here, they're supposed to be 
an opportunity for you to do whatever you like as far as creativity is concerned. So I've got some students who have done it exactly like this and they are just adding as they go, which is perfectly fine. You know, they're just adding a header or a title, making it show up on the table of contents and they're going. Awesome. I have other students who have made a point to come up here and they've gone over to pages and they've actually started adding pages in. And so instead of having a table of contents going down, they have like a table of contents listed so that we can see what it is, but their actual pages are the table of contents. That's perfectly fine too. Um, and, and again, that's something for you to find out, something for you to explore. Um, I had one student who instead of uh, putting up like a video or a song that described them, they linked um, one of their playlists from Spotify and was like, here's a playlist I've created that's music I like. That's perfect. You know, as long as you meet the requirements of the rubric, that's the bare minimum. Have fun with it. Um, but you have to at least take those initial steps. Make sure you check the rubric and also pay attention on the rubric. If you're stretched for time, focus on the parts that are worth more points. And um, yeah, if yeah. you've looked at the rubric, you'll also notice there's a bonus opportunity at the bottom. Because basically there's a section on here that we didn't have time to fit in. So uh, you might want to do that, just FYI. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't... Good hint, Mr. Powell. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I feel like some of us are really taking advantage of this and having fun with it. And some of us are just getting bogged down because it looks like more work. Um, and you shouldn't be looking at it that way. You know, make this your own, make this something that you can refer to in the future. You know, there's no reason why you can't have other parts on your website too that aren't even related to math, that maybe are just related to your other classes or related to other things. That's okay. I mean, one person for their picture, they said they like to skateboard. So they've got a picture of Rick. It's actually a, um, a GIF of Rick on a skateboard from Rick and Morty. And he's just repeatedly, you know, jumping on a skateboard. I mean, that's cool. You know, I have people that are putting different pictures on every page that kind of relates to something different about them. Um, you know, I have people that are writing, you know, entire paragraphs about themselves because they want this to be more like a journal. And that's the point. You know, if you're just going to do the bare minimum, then it's not really enriching. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, do you have anything else to add? Yeah. Uh, no, you covered it great. All right. So go back game, call us and tell us what, you know, or contact if you're having trouble. Yeah. Um, otherwise, please stay safe. It's crazy out there. Uh, we don't know what the next steps are going to be, but we hope to see you all um, in the building come August. Um, yeah, and we miss you. We do yeah, miss you. We really do. Um, we're getting tired of looking at the paint on the walls, I promise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all take care. All right. Bye. Thank you. Okay.